Are you thinking about taking your Boston Terrier on a plane ride? Well, in this interview, I actually sat down with the owner of EQ Pet Travel, and she shares with us some tips on how to safely travel with your Boston Terrier. Coming up. Hey everybody, welcome to the Boston Terrier Society YouTube channel. Consider subscribing if you're someone who wants to learn more about the breed, learn what it's like to be an owner, hear expert interviews like the one today, or connect with other Boston Terrier lovers just like yourself. I'm Donnie Gardner, the founder of bostonterriersociety.com. Over there is Bella, my Boston of over a decade. Today I sit down and talk with Janie Martin. She's the owner of EQ Pet Travel, and she's gonna be sharing with us some tips when traveling with your Boston Terrier. Now she is gonna be mentioning some crates as well as some other documentations that you might be needing. I'll leave some of that information in the show notes below so you can go check that out. Otherwise, let's get into the show. Janie, thanks so much for coming on the Boston Terrier Society YouTube channel. Um, before we get started, as far as you know, talking about traveling with Boston Terriers, can you just tell me a little bit about yourself and your business that you have? Yeah, I started uh, EQ Pet Travel of uh, summer of 2019. Uh, mm -hmm. Something that I had thought about for a while, something that I wanted to do because I like to travel. Uh, mm -hmm. I do a lot of dog shows, and so I do a lot of road trips anyway. So I knew it was something that... Um, that I would enjoy doing. And yeah. uh, I actually got my uh, USDA license for transport about six months before I, you know, before the whole business hatched in my brain. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> so I start, uh, started um, with ground transportation, doing, you know, some pretty big road trips with that. And it's kind of, especially with, um, you know, the COVID situation, it's kind of morphed into a lot more uh, flight nanny uh, trips as well as helping people to get their dogs across the Canadian border here in Washington because that's okay. with the restrictions there's not many ways to get across other than with approved commercial shippers and, and jumping through some hoops and you know doing everything very much by the book so yeah well as far as you know people just traveling thing with their Boston Terrier what would mm -hmm. you say is the best travel method would it be by car or plane do Boston's tend to do better with one or the other? You know, it, part of it depends on the Boston um, mm -hmm. and the distance that you're going. Um, if you've got a dog that doesn't want to be in a, in a carry-on bag for very long, if, you know, you've got one that gets really nervous and upset, a larger crate in a vehicle would probably be better. Mm -hmm. But usually uh, by plane is quicker. Um, a little bit easier on them if you've got one that gets car sick really bad and, you know, you've got a 15-hour trip with them, that's going to be harder on them than if you can just take them on a plane. Yeah. Uh, so usually in-cabin is is easiest on them. It's, some depends on the dog. Mm -hmm. Now, as far as, like, in-cabin and everything with the plane, uh, Boston Terriers with their flat faces, is it safe for a Boston Terrier to fly under the cabin or they're always in your lap? Because I've seen on some airlines where it's a restriction. Right. Uh, most airlines, in fact, I think all airlines in the U.S. right now, um, they mm -hmm. will not fly them cargo. Um, okay. Any flat-faced breeds. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting, and, and of course I've got, you know, pretty big opinion on, <laughs> on me basically categorizing all brackies as mm -hmm. having airway issues and, and being at risk. You know, a well-bred Boston can have a, a great airway and a very flat face and a, a long-nosed dog can have airway issues. So it um, doesn't really fix the issue with the airline just lumping all brackies into one, especially like, I mean, boxers, that's a working dog that you you know, that's your jogging buddy a lot of times. Uh -huh. yeah. so, um, they really don't have the same issues. So it's, it's a lot of it is to, you know, kind of, I think, cover the airlines in case anything does happen. They, a flat face breed is more prone to issues. You will have to take them in cabin. And, uh, you know, that is the safest way to go. It's a little bit difficult when they put those restrictions out as far as sending them in car or not being able to send them in cargo. Because if you've got a, you know, 25, 30 pound Frenchie that is very cramped in a carry on bag, Right. You know, taking them in cabin, that is less safe than having a nice roomy crate in cargo. Uh, yeah. A lot of people are, they're afraid of cargo and not being safe, but it's pressurized, it's climate controlled, and many other breeds ship that way all the time. The risk comes when, let's say you are, maybe they've got to switch planes in Houston and it's in the spring and it's 80 degrees and you've got the heat coming down and it's coming up off of the pavement mm -hmm. um, out on the on the tarmac you've got you know uh airline that's not paying attention and they leave the dog sitting out there on the 
on a cart for a while. Right. Yeah. There's, there's some severe risks right there. So it's not the cargo itself. It's it's the transfer process. And yeah, I've always wanted to like trying to take Bella because she's 23 pounds. Yeah. Oh, yeah. definitely gained some weight since I took her to the oh, yeah. a month or two ago. I'm like, having her as a carry-on, that would be interesting. Yeah, get wheels. Get uh -huh. a wheel uh, yeah. carry-on yes. bag, yes. <laughs> Makes it a little easier going through the airport. Yeah, no, yeah. The uh, <laughs> As far as an airline and everything, um, yeah. this might be a loaded question, but what uh -huh. would you say is the most pet-friendly airline, in your opinion? Um. I've used several, and I would say, um, like Alaska is is doing some cargo shipping right now, which most mm -hmm. of them have stopped during COVID because a lot of the flights get canceled, and you don't want a dog to get stranded for eight hours somewhere and have to mm -hmm. get rebooked and all of that. So most airlines have stopped, but uh, you know Alaska's pretty pet friendly. Most of them are pretty pet friendly. I would say Delta has a little less room under the seat in front of you, so you have mm -hmm. to have a little bit. Of smaller bag, not as much room to fly them in. United has probably the strictest rules as far as bringing a pet. They cannot be under four months. Most of them are eight to, t to 10 weeks, but it's for United, it's four months. They've got more like the rabies certificate, health certificate mm -hmm. all have to be available. I haven't had them check for it, but you always, you know, the time that they're going to check is the, you know, the time you forgot it at home. Right. So you know, make sure you have your paperwork, mm -hmm. but they're, they're a lot more, they're a lot more strict, but I don't think they're unfriendly mm -hmm. <laughs> for pets, but uh, just a little bit more hoops to jump through to fly there. Hey, I hope you're enjoying the show. If you are, definitely consider subscribing to this YouTube channel just so you can get the latest from Boston Terrier Society. All right, back to the show. Well, as far as like uh, flight length and everything, is mm -hmm. there... I mean, I don't know who would be flying their Boston Terrier to New Zealand or something crazy as far as distance and whatnot, but is there right. like a maximum length where you'd be like, that's probably not safe. Maybe a car ride would be better. If you have to fly a, a Boston to, let's say, Australia, uh -huh. the dog has to go cargo, which is a really, really long time for the dog to be unsupervised, you know, mm -hmm. not checked on it. That worries the heck out of me. They yeah. won't let you take them in cabin for some odd reason, but mm -hmm. those airlines will let you put them in cargo overseas. That's something that I have not wanted to do, even though I've got inquiries to, to send a dog there. I have taken them in cabin. Like I've gone to Helsinki, Finland. I've gone to Poland. I've gone to mm -hmm. Serbia, Germany, all pretty long flights. They, they do in this case, well. they're sitting right there in your lap, right? At this point? I mean, they're in um, so they're supposed to stay in their in their carrier under the seat in front of you. Sometimes you can get them to you know let you take them out for a little while, but the ones that can sit in your lap or at your feet are typically uh, emotional support animals or service dogs. Okay. They're allowed out of their seats, but otherwise they're supposed to stay in their uh, in their crate. Yeah. And most of the time they do sleep, you know, they're, they're not getting up and moving around. So they're not having to go to the bathroom as much. You're, you know, you don't want to give them a ton of water before the trip. You know, you give them a right. little bit as you go, but right. don't load them with food. The stomachs will get sick. They'll throw up sometimes. Um, yeah. Don't load them up with water because then they're just going to have to hold it till, you know, until you've got to stop. A little easier on them if you just give them little, little bits at a time. Along the way, keep their mouth wet. Um, what are like three tips that you might have for them if this is their first time? Get a good bag. <laughs> yeah. There's lots of different types of bags and I have a couple with me. This is one of my favorites. It's got wheels on the bottom and it's okay. like a backpack. Mm -hmm. So you can roll it, you can put it on your back and it has a great pocket in the front. Um, so I can put my headphones and my cell phone and everything in there along with some potty pads. So oh. that, that really helps and it's, you know, they can sit up in it easier. So I like, I like that. Another one that I have has and I'll wheels be on them. the show notes for those bags too. Somebody yeah, I'll figure out them. what kind of, I don't even know if I know what kind of, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Amazon. Uh -huh. But, um, but if you've got a lot of like transferring between airports, if, you know, mm -hmm. if you're going into a big airport and you're going to have to be hauling your dog around, especially if you, you know, have any health issues or anything like that, where you've got to be lugging, you know, 20 pounds on your arm around, get one that has wheels, get one that has really good airflow, because you don't know if you're going to have the person in front of you, you know, if they're going to have their feet up against the front of it, you know, someone next to you's got their backpack stuffed in there, maybe you've got the, you know, a backpack or the wall on the other side, make sure they've got air, you know, maybe even once you get settled in there, 
pull the crate forward a little bit mm -hmm. so that there's better flow all the way around because you don't want it to get stuck being under the seat there. It's already, you know, kind of claustrophobic for them as it is. So Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wouldn't have thought about that. Honestly, the, the pocket <laughs> is, is very helpful in in the carry-on just because it's you're already kind of struggling with that to get it under the seat and people you know you got 40 people behind you waiting to get seated and you're trying to get your you know your bag up there and you're it's right. the, the less you have to mess with once you get to your seat the better so that definitely mm -hmm. helps make sure that you have all of your paperwork check with the airlines and check their requirements mm -hmm. even though they rarely ask for it um, you don't want to get stuck checking in and they're like, oh, hey, where's your health certificate? And you didn't realize that that was part of the requirements and then you're stuck there. Right. Mm -hmm. um, make sure all of that is done ahead of time and um, acclimate your dog to the carry-on beforehand okay. so mm -hmm. that they're not stressed. Um, as you're going through security, um, obviously you're not rolling them through the x-ray. <laughs> you take uh -huh. the dog out, you roll the bag through the x-ray, take your kibble out, um, they, if you've got a baggie of kibble in there, they, mm -hmm. they want to see that. They don't necessarily need to see your shampoo and hairspray and all that stuff anymore. They mm -hmm. want to see the kibble now. So I don't, I don't know when those rules change, but, but that gets taken out and set in there. Mm -hmm. So getting through security is a little bit smoother. Um, if you have that ready to take out, carry the dog through. They do swab your hands for, I don't know if you're smuggling drugs in mm -hmm. your dog or <laughs> what exactly they swab. Right. I don't ask because yeah, yeah. I don't have to worry about it. So, um, it's about, oh, and don't, and don't feed them a, a big meal and give them a bunch to drink right before you go. It's, right. It's, well, as far as like the requirements for each airline, is there like a centralized database or are you pretty much Googling? I mean, obviously you at this point know, but like if somebody was starting out, would you just Google, you know, Delta airline dog rules basically? Yeah, the, they have them all on their site. Um, mm -hmm. And sometimes you will get someone on the phone that doesn't know their own rules for their own company yeah. so yeah, it's good to check ahead of time because they might start telling you something that's not actually correct i had a puppy that was um that was 16 weeks old and the rep on the phone said no they have to be four months mm -hmm. and i said well with puppies 16 weeks is that's four months and she says oh no it's their birthday four months later mm -hmm. But on their website, had I looked ahead of time, it would have solved some time with her going back and forth with supervisors. It did say mm -hmm. four months or 16 weeks. So okay. um, knowing the rules ahead of time kind of saves you a little bit of a headache. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, I mean, those are great tips. Anything else you would like to share at this point? Well, I would say um, as far as ground transport, mm -hmm. um, if you're going to have your dog in your car, use a crate. Or if you use one of those little um, seats that they have, make sure it's one that has a harness. Because if there is an accident, there's a lot of them. And I, I had one. It's, it's just a little, a little seat um, that straps mm -hmm. in. It's got kind of, you know, four little sides on it. Mm -hmm. Put a pillow in there. You put them down in it. And it has a little um, strap that gets attached to the collar. Oh, okay. And I would attach the strap. If I would go to hand somebody's dog off to them and open up the side door, I'd, I'd you know, snap the, mm -hmm. the uh, strap onto my own dog because I would have one in the front seat a lot and then I would mm -hmm. you know, transport other people's dogs. Um, but I wouldn't leave it on, you know, while we were traveling. And it, it occurred to me later mm -hmm. um, that if you were to have an accident and you've got a leash attached to your dog's neck, right. that could yeah. be really uh -huh. dangerous. Yeah. Um, so if they are strapped in, it needs to be a, a harness, but the best thing for them to be in is a crate. And I know people like have the dogs ride in the front seat and I, you know, toss them in the front seat. Let's go to the vet. Yeah. Um, but if you're, if you're taking a, a trip, um, the safest thing is to have them in a crate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We, uh, secured. Well, yeah. I'm, well, I'll show you maybe after the interview and whatnot, but yeah, I bought a big crate just because I have two kids now. I have a three-year-old yeah. and now a one-year-old and with Bella, I was like, man, if she is a little brick, if we happen uh -huh. to get in a wreck, and oh yeah, like, yeah, great. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the plastic sided, the wire crates, a little bit, you know, less safe than than the plastic side sided crate. So yeah. yeah. Well, if anybody has any questions, maybe they're wanting to, you know, I've had people ask from flying from Europe over here to the states and whatnot. Mm -hmm. If they have questions, can they just find you maybe on Facebook or your website to ask these type of questions? Um, yes, I'm on Facebook. It's just facebook.com forward slash EQ Pet Travel. And then I have a website, which is just eqpettravel.com. Okay. And I'll keep those in the show notes so people awesome. can go there. All right. Well, Janie, thank you so much for coming on today. I really appreciate it. Bye.
Hey, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you are about to travel with your Boston Terrier, I hope you found some golden nuggets that are actually gonna help you out. Once again, some of the information that Janie put out there, I'll leave that in the show notes below so you can go check it out. I've also written some articles on bostonterriersociety.com. Those articles are gonna be in the show notes as well. Now, if you haven't already, consider subscribing to this YouTube channel just so you can get the latest from Boston Terrier Society. Check out this video here. It's a quiz on how well do you know Boston Terriers, or you can check out one of my latest videos here. Otherwise, until next time, life is better with the Boston. Right, Sleepy Bella? Yes.